This is David Whiteside reporting from the banks of the Tennessee River here in Decatur, Alabama. I've been involved with the Riverkeeper movement for over 10 years through my godfather and mentor Robert F. Kennedy Jr. The first Riverkeeper was started on the Hudson River in 1966. A band of commercial fishermen who could no longer sell their fish on market due to pollution and safety and public health concerns banded together to protect their careers and their families livelihood. They got together at an American Legion Hall in Croton, New York in 1966 and they were so furious at these polluters they started talking about even breaking the law. However, a writer from Sports Illustrated at the time named Bob Boyle had found an old statute in the New York State books, the 1888 Rivers and Harbors Act, that said citizens could patrol the river and sue polluters and collect a bounty as long as that bounty was used for further protection of that river. They got together in 1966 and started what would become the first river keeper on the Hudson River. Their aggressive brand of aggressive environmental law enforcement against major corporations like General Electric and General Motors and Exxon had, had miraculously cleaned up the Hudson River, which was basically pronounced biologically dead in the 50s and 60s. Their success has inspired the creation of over 190 waterkeepers worldwide. The Waterkeeper Alliance was founded in 1999 by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and some of the original waterkeeper programs. Today, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is our president. In 2001, I started Black Warrior Riverkeeper here in Alabama. Our state regulatory agency in Alabama, the Alabama Department of Environmental Management, is notorious for their environmental enforcement. They have one of the lowest budgets of any state regulatory agency in the country and are one of the most apathetic state regulatory agencies in terms of enforcing the law, which is what they were mandated to do in the first place. When I started Black Warrior Riverkeeper in 2001, I was told that I was going to be going up against tremendous odds, including the state regulatory agency that was supposed to be enforcing these environmental laws. All of these people that told me this were correct. Black Warrior Riverkeeper since 2001 has legally addressed over 15,500 Clean Water Act violations in the state of Alabama. Many of them were sewage related or other industrial, industrial discharges. We go to the state capitol in Montgomery, Alabama, to ADEM's offices and pour through their files that the, of the polluters' permits and their discharge monitoring reports that the polluters are forced to file. To our surprise, oftentimes we find violations in the state regulatory agency's file cabinet. That means they knew about these violations. The polluter admitted that they were operating their business illegally and illegally discharging into the rivers of Alabama. However, our state regulatory agency refused to do anything about it, and if they actually did do something about it, they issued the minimal penalty allowed by law, basically slapping the polluters on the wrist. Well, in 2001, Black Warrior Riverkeeper hit the scene, and we started pouring through the hundreds and hundreds of permits to pollute that ADEM has rubber stamped because they hardly ever deny the right to pollute to a polluter in Alabama. What we found was there were violations throughout their file cabinets that they had taken no action on. So we took the law into our own hands. And fortunately, when Congress passed the Clean Water Act in the 70s, they knew that government had the potential to be corrupted. They also knew that the public's water supply was so important to the citizens that, it needed, that if, if government did become corrupt and refused to enforce the law for one reason or another, that they wrote into the Clean Water Act the citizen enforcement provision that basically gave citizens the right to take the law into their own hands and protect their own public water supply if the government was not doing their job. That's what river keepers do. We're vigilantes. There's a new sheriff in town. We take the law into our own hands and prosecute these godless polluters for their illegal violations. If, 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 if a criminal was told, told the police, I can no longer I can't, I can't afford to stop breaking the law because it'll put me out of business and it'll put my employees out of business. If that criminal told that to the cops, they'd throw him in jail. That, that excuse wouldn't fly with a normal police department. However, for some reason with polluters in the South, when they argue that they can't afford to stop polluting or to stop breaking the law because it might put them out of business or jeopardize their bottom line, that excuse is legit in the state of Alabama. 
I have no idea why, but fortunately Congress was wise enough to put citizen enforcement provisions into the Clean Water Act and allow citizens to protect their own water supply. And that's what river keepers do. Today I'm on the Tennessee River. It's a lot different than the Black Warrior. We've been enforcing environmental laws on the Black Warrior River for eight years now, and we've seen a change on that watershed. However, in this river, which is also a very industrialized river that flows through Tennessee and northern Alabama, there are numerous polluters in illegal violation of their Clean Water Act permits. There are numerous polluters that are illegally discharging into this river, and because there's no river keeper here until now, there's, there hasn't been any kind of enforcement going on in this river, and or if there was enforcement, it was minimal at best. So there's lots of other rivers in the state of Alabama and in the deep south that don't have river keepers on them. And as a result, there's kind of a lawlessness mentality among the polluters in these rivers that, that they can get away with, with, pollution, with illegal pollution and either get slapped on the wrist or even get away hands free. Alabama is one of the most aquatically biodiverse states in America. I love it here. There's tons of pollution and tons of apathy towards environmental enforcement, but there's more aquatic biodiversity in this state and in Tennessee than almost any other state in America. We have more species of freshwater fish, snails, crawfish, and mussels than any other region in the world. Our aquatic biodiversity is sometimes compared to the biodiversity in the Amazon. There's still a lot of aquatic biodiversity that's left in Alabama. Not as much on large reservoirs like this, but on the undammed parts of rivers or the undammed tributaries that are less developed, there's still tons of aquatic biodiversity that remains. And it is our goal of the River Keepers of the South and my mission personally to protect not only that aquatic biodiversity, but to protect this water supply most importantly for the citizens. We have a right to clean water. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, rich or poor, black or white, humble or noble, you have a right to clean drinking water in this country. And the river keepers and myself personally have committed our lives to defending that right for Americans and for citizens worldwide.